Thank you so much, um, Barbara, um, for having me. And thank you so much for, for everybody else um, for coming. You know, I'm sure everyone's just closing up from work and, you know, spending their evenings here. Really, really grateful that you're all here to hear more about what, what I have to speak about. Um, I'm going to present my screen shortly. Um, but first of all, I want to get the room warm a bit. So please, if you just introduce yourself in the chat, um, you know, tell us your name. I, I'm, I know people have put their name already. You know, what do you do? Why are you interested in data? Um, and, you know, why you've decided to tune in tonight, um, you know, on, on this meetup. So please get the chat, chat warm. I really want to see and engage with you. I want this to be as interactive as possible. So yes, let the chat, the chat get warm. Okay. Awesome. So as Barbara said, my name is Oyin Adebayo. Full name is Oyin Kosala Adebayo. So you might be wondering where does that name come from? Um, I'm Nigerian by origin. Um, and I grew up partly in Nigeria and grew up here as well. Um, now, today I'm going to be talking about the importance of Black and ethnic minority women in data. Um, you know, I'm going to also talk a little bit about, like, you know, my background um, and where I've come from. Currently, I'm privileged to serve as the founder and the CEO of a company called Nia Enterprise. Um, hey, hey, Anjali, lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you. Um, and it's great to see you, and, you know, love to connect more with you as well. Please put your LinkedIn as well into the chat. I'm sure people will love to connect with each other. Um, so yes, um, so I'm the CEO and founder of Neo Enterprise, and I'll explain a little bit why I decided to start the organization. But actually, um, first and foremost, I'm actually a woman in data. Um, and the reason why, you know, you, some people are like, well, you're not really a woman in data because you're an economist. I actually started off as an economist. I studied economics to master's degree, um, development economics. So for those who have maybe gone through the economics route, maybe you've done economics to a, uh, a specific level at university, you would know that we work with a bunch of, like literally most of what we do is data. Um, so really, really been involved with working with so much data. And I remember um, one of the things that used to really bother me when I used to do a lot of research um, in my master's, to do my master's thesis was actually the lack of black and ethnic minority data. I wrote a thesis on the connection of happiness and poverty um, of Nigerian migrants in the UK, and I couldn't find much data on it. Um, you know, um, I'll, I'll speak a bit more about the beauty side of the business. When I actually would look on places like Mintel, and I'll look at, you know, different databases, and just to try and find out Black and ethnic minority data in the UK, I couldn't find anything on it. The data I was finding was like really rough data from, from the US. And so I'm really, really passionate about data. Um, really, really passionate about making sure the way I see it is our data, you know, represents our history. Our data represents who we are. Our data represents our background. So if we're not able to record that, um, we're not actually able to trace back people's history and pre people's backgrounds. So that's a little bit about me. So hey, Vi hey Violetta, lovely to see you. Um, PhD student research in deep learning applied to computer. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I'm really, really, you know, really awesome to have you here. Hey Candice um, or Andes, um, lovely to have you here as a PhD student, in, you know, studying particle physics. Really, really great. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. All right, so what is Neo Enterprise? First of all, I'm going to introduce the company because it, it will set the scene of why um, I'm so interested in data and I'm so interested in this space. Um, Neo Enterprise, we're an organization that looks to economically empower um, Black and ethnic minority women through innovative tools. We currently do that through technology boot camps, hair and beauty boot camps, and business boot camps. Um, so, um, so Barbara just mentioned that she was part of our data boot camp called the Black Disruptor Data Analytics and Project Management Boot Camp. Um, and the aim of that was, um, you know, we started off an organization, we started off a boot camp in software engineering um, to get as many black women as possible into tech, but we realized so quickly that actually um, tech, you know, software engineering is only one part of tech. And actually it's important that 
you know, black and ethnic minority women, black and Asian uh, women are, are really represented in the data space as well. So I started this organization as well because I was really bothered about income poverty. Did you know that 40% of the UK's black household experience income poverty and work, work in low school employment. And if we even look at the wider, if we look at the black and ethnic minority wider group, I'm sure it's, you know, it's a lot more as well. Um, and for me, I really wanted to solve this, not just by representing us in the data space, but also making sure that we are economically empowered. Remember I mentioned earlier on that I, my focus is about economically empowering women, really, really making sure that we have level, equal level playing fields when it comes to um, playing in different industries that we that we find ourselves in. Um, and guess what? If you're in income poverty, the last thing you're thinking about is making sure that your data is being captured. And so it's important that we get people who may be experiencing, experiencing these things to actually to actually be the producers of the of that ecosystem. So we've been able to train over 60 women so far in, in, in the Northwest to become data analysts and project managers. Um, and we're training a further 50 women in the West Midlands as well. So 110 women so far, we're not doing too bad. Um, but one of the key things for us is to make sure that um, all these women are, are equipped so that they can actually go on and work in data. Again, um, why did I start? Why did I actually go down this route? Um, and why did I go down? data. I mean, it started off with me actually looking at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I realized that, you know, one of the things that we, you know, as ethnic minority groups, um, is that we look at actually how can we meet those physiological needs, but I wanted to accelerate that progress. I really wanted to accelerate that process um, of us really being um, self-actualizing, making sure that we are you know, playing equally in the, in the in our different ecosystems. And we couldn't do that if we weren't represented in our data. You know, I'll give you an example. When I was doing my thesis and I was looking at, okay, how, um, one of the kind of case I was looking at was, can we compare PhD, you know, PhD education with income, um, with income prosperity and with, um, with happiness um, amongst a specific group of people. At this, in this case, it was Nigerian migrants in the UK. And I couldn't find much data. I think out of that, that full data set of multiple data points, there was only four, four, um, <laughs> four people from that group um, of representative, that sample group. Um, and my, by the way, the sample size was around 10,000. Out of 10,000, there was only four. <laughs> um, and so you understand that, actually it's really important that we engage people and engage these groups black and ethnic minority groups to be the producers so that they can engage their communities to ensure that we're actually contributing to those data sets um because without data and without understanding of what without data we will actually tr um truly we're not able to actually truly understand what's going on in our community I remember I tuned into um, a presentation by somebody from the co-op here at the, in a meetup group sometime last year. And we're looking at, you know, um, how co-op was able to, um, you know, disseminate community data. And I began to ask questions about, okay, what does that community data look like from a demographical perspective, e.g. black women, e.g. Um, Asian women. Um, and we couldn't answer that question because we couldn't go we couldn't go, um, we, we couldn't, you know, devolve that data enough. We couldn't make it a, a lot smaller. And for me, um, out, you know, for example, if if we're saying that, okay, out of the 100 people that we were, we were able to survey, 40% of those people, um, you know, um, were poor, for example, um, and 60% were rich, what 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 you know? What are the different contributors to the to, to poverty and race and ethnicity is one of the key things that we cannot ignore. Um, so back to what I was talking about when it comes to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, really really important for us to make sure that we are really looking at this in terms of actually using our data points to inform us of the type of work that we need to do in different communities, in different cities, in different regions, in different nations to be able to make sure that. We live in a more, more equitable world. Hey, Elisha, lovely to meet you. You're from Birmingham. I'm in Birmingham as well. Um, it's good to see you here. Um, 
have a few months worth of knowledge in code and but more interested in data. I love, I would love to connect with you. So I'm going to add you on LinkedIn later on. Hey Sarah from Manchester, works as a data analyst um, in in Wedja. Love, lovely to meet you. Hey Kami, doing a postgrad in smart cities and some interesting profiles here. Really, really good to have you all here. Thank you so much for joining. Okay. So um, another reason <laughs> why um, really interested in data is because women have higher rates of poverty than men across um, almost all races and ethnicities. Um, and you, as you can see here, you know, this is an Amer this is American data. I couldn't find anything from the UK. Um, but you can see that when you compare the men and the women, we all, we we have higher rates of poverty. And actually, it's not just that data. Actually, it helps us to understand what's going on in our ecosystem. Or working in data pays. How many people here know that working in data does pay? You know, it pays. So for us to be able to actually see this change, we need to make sure that women are playing in the data space, in the data field. And so um, for us at NEO, one of the things that we do to ensure that we're able to change this narrative is, is building women who have the right spirit, the right knowledge, the right understanding, the right wisdom, and the right kind of skills to build and produce disruptive products and services um, that change the face of culture. So I want, we want to be able to see those statistics change. We want to be able to see more women in data, more, more women playing, and also um, being economically empowered as well. So this is kind of, you know, the business and what, you know, how, how we run. So we've got two, we've got two arms, Neo Hair and BTN Neo Network. Neo Network currently houses all of our different boot camps, our Black Coder Software Engineering Boot Camp, which essentially aims to get as many Black women as possible um, into software engineering. Um, we've trained over 150 women and um, different, different people have gone into different companies at like KPMG, um, some government departments, um, Citibank and the likes. And also we're currently training women in data as well. Um, and so they're all going through different routes. Um, they're learning, I'm sure Barbara will be able to tell you about what she's been able to learn, but they're learning from Excel to Python to SQL, um, you know, in order to be equipped to be able to go into into tech. So we'd like to call out, we'd like to call Neo Network the number one destination for black and ethnic female disruptors globally. Um, we want people to come here to be able to be upskilled and to learn, um, you know, and then to be able to get into tech as well. How do we do this? Um, we, we train black and ethnic minority women who are at the risk of unemployment or in low school employment, and we create opportunities catered directly to their purposeful path, whether they want to go into employment in a high impact industry, in, the, in this case, in, a, in the data field, or running their own disruptive businesses. Um, our vision is to break the vicious cycle of poverty um, and by economically empowering women and upskilling them in an effective way. Um, as well. So we want to be able to bridge the gaps that people will feel in terms of entering into the tech space, in this case, the data space. I've already spoken about income poverty, and I've already spoken a, li a lot about access. There's, you know, 90% of the network before we started the book, we kind of said that actually they don't know how to actually get into tech and they don't know how to, where to start. And so we act as that kind of place where people can you know, be themselves, relate, and also be able to kind of get into, into the, the different tech fields, in this case, data. Um, a lot of companies are, you know, struggling with diversity and inclusion at the moment in terms of trying to actually make sure that the cost of diversity and inclusion, lack of diversity and inclusion reduces. So we support companies to make sure that we can, um, you know, get as many women in ethnic minority groups um, into these organizations. Training costs a lot of money. <laughs> um, it can cost as, as much as five thousand pounds and above, and so we we offer like fully funded spaces where people don't have to pay to to be part of the boot camps. And so bridging that gap for us is really really important. So how do we do this? We do this through the Black Coder boot camp. We do this through the the data analytics boot camps. Um, we have various kind of arms. Um, various boot camps that we we run to ensure that people can get into um, various areas of tech as possible. 
Um, so we we really interested in actually calling out for people, for mentors um, who are working in data. So if you're working in a data space and you want to be able to give back to the community and want to support learners, um, we're actually giving you know, doing a call out, see how, you know, how you can support some learners who are just new to the data field. Um, also, um, we're always looking for tutors as well um, who want to support that. That's, you know, the mentor side is, is completely voluntary whilst the tutor is paid for. Um, and so, yeah, um, we we look to kind of see how we can work with different organizations to, to just bridge this, you know, this gap of a lack of women in, in data. Gonna go back to the comments, make sure that, okay. So I mentioned why, why I ended up here. Um, I wouldn't call myself a data analyst of, of some sort. I would just call myself an, an evangelist of women in tech. <laughs> um, you know, um, I'm really passionate of making sure that women are, you know, I'm, I'm currently um, in Denver for a blockchain summit. And just the fact that I'm going to go into a room and there's not going to be many women, many black women, many black and ethnic minority women, it bothers me. So I'm really, you know, I, I, I do what I do to make sure that we, a lot of us are represented in these areas. So if you're part of our newsletter, you will see that what we do is really just to push for us to make sure that we're in these rooms. Um, I started off as an economist um, and my research got me here. Funny enough, um, as I was doing a lot of research about poverty, um, and at the same time, I was building this community, not even because of anything and just, just for fun and just because I really was passionate about this. Um, I realized if I wanted to solve this thing about poverty, um, I needed to do something about it. And I remember stumbling upon the World Economic Forum 2030 report and looked at the jobs that were gonna be automated in the next few years. And I looked at the data that we had of the community. I looked at the jobs that they had and I said, wow, <laughs> a lot of these women's jobs are going to be automated soon. So why don't we upskill um, people so that they can become producers? Um, so, so, yeah, I wanted Black women to be at the center of, of all of kind of um, the production of our data. Uh, there's different like documentaries that you would have seen about... Um, about the lack of representation. I mean, on Netflix, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called like, I can't remember what the Netflix documentary is called, but it was showing you the reality of the lack of um, black and ethnic minority data and its contributions to how um, products are built. Um, so the more women we see in this space, the better, um, and the more we can continue to kind of um, build things that becomes um, really, really um, relevant for the whole society that we live in. And um, most people ask me, okay, cool. Okay, if we're we're minor, if we're minority, then surely it shouldn't be much of a problem because you know, surely it's a population balance. But if you look, if you if you actually zoom into the UK only, maybe that narrative may be slightly true. But let's zoom into the globe. You know, we're not the minority in the globe. <laughs> um, you know, we have Asia and we have Africa. Um, we're not the minority. There's, there's, you know, black and ethnic minority women are populated across across the globe. Sorry, it keeps going back. Bear with me. Okay, so impact. Um, I want to be able to train even more women to get into to, into different areas of tech, open up more, more doors. You know, start like different scholarships for women to be able to really break those barriers. Um, and get people into high impact roles. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm open to having questions now. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me, um, I'm on LinkedIn, it's Oin Kosola Debayo on LinkedIn. And you can email me if you also need to as well, oin at neoenterprise.com. Thank you so much for having me.